Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. You can follow me on X at Movies TV Mad and on Instagram and on Fred's at Movies TV Mad X. A very warm welcome to Friday's edition of the DC Universe Daily. Well, we're going to be talking about Marvel quite a lot today on the DC Universe Daily. And if you're asking what the hell has that got to do with DC, Mick? Everything. Now, yesterday I mistakenly said to you that Superman Legacy and Fantastic Four would both be released on the same date. I was wrong. I didn't misinform you purposely. I got my facts wrong and I apologise. And I did put a disclaimer on the video. I don't know if you noticed it, but I did. Anyway, they are released within two weeks of each other. So what we were talking about yesterday still stands. They're still clashing. Superman Legacy is released, I think, one week of Fantastic Four. So Superman Legacy gets one weekend to try and make some headway. So in terms, you know, you kind of in the end kind of could hurt each other. You see, there's two scenarios here, as I said yesterday. Either people go and see both movies or they choose a movie. It will be very interesting. Anyway, I want to talk about Marvel for a moment. They've become The MCU has become the DCEU because we had Man of Steel, a movie that I love, but it was divisive. It divided audiences. There's no question about that. And it divided critics as well. What did they do with BVS? Um, you know, Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice. They doubled down on what they did on Man of Steel and then some and continued to divide audience, audiences. It was even more divisive than Man of Steel. And when you do that, and I love BVS as well, by the way, and the Snyder Cut, but Marvel are dividing audiences. They've got the fandom menace at their heels, exposing them constantly. You know, the fandom menace, Nerd Roddick, and all of those content creators. You know, I do subscribe to Nerd Roddick. He is interesting. I don't agree with everything he says politically, but he does make a lot, a lot of good points about the industry today. Anyway, you know, the fandom menace are going after Marvel and Disney like a, do like a dog with a butt. And so that's a big problem. So there's this divisive nature. So I was watching a video from Emergency Awesome, Charlie Snyder, I like his presentation on his videos, always have. And he said, oh my God, the MCU is cooking. Again, you know, Deadpool versus Wolverine. Yesterday they released a trailer for, you know, the continuation of the 90s X-Men cartoon series. And they announced the Fantastic Forecast and, of course, the release date for Fantastic Four. So Charlie was saying they're cooking. I don't think they are cooking. They should be cooking, but they're dividing audiences. Now, it's, it is very interesting because, for example, one of the X-Men characters, I forgot which one it was, by the way, I think is going, is going to be, gen, you know, I think gender neutral or whatever. I'm not sure. I don't know if I've got that right. Anyway, this upset a lot of people because clearly that's something that wasn't the case in the original animation anyway so already you've got people going after disney and marvel studios again now we spoke yesterday briefly about the casting for fantastic four but a lot of people are, are upset by the casting of pedro pascal because it is interesting, isn't it? Because you could argue that the other castings are at least kind of comic book accurate to a point. But Pedro Pascal is no Mr. Fantastic. Let's be clear about that. And it's not because he's a Latin ex actor, right? It's nothing to do with that, by the way. You could cast Michael B. Jordan as Mr. Fantastic, and that would be more comic accurate than Pedro Pascal. Pedro is a great actor. He could end up being an awesome Mr. Fantastic. But I don't see him, his character, having a relationship with Sue Storm like we saw in the first two movies, if you remember them. I haven't read the comics, so I don't know if Sue Storm and Mr. Fantastic have a relationship, romantic relationship in those comics. So I can't tell you that. 
But I can't see that happening, and I can't see it happening in the MCU, which probably will also upset fans. So they're going down this, what should we call it, diverse, politically correct kind of avenue, but it's very, very aggressive. Uh, let me give you an analogy for modern day diversity, especially in the entertainment industry, and especially in Hollywood. So have you ever had a Mr. Kipling's cake before? Jam tarts, apple pie. So just imagine, right, they decided not to call them Mr. Kipling's anymore, right? And call them Mr. Baragama, right? And they have a picture of a black guy instead of a white guy called Mr. Kipling, right? I'm just giving you an analogy. That's what Hollywood in the entertainment industry are doing. Rewriting history, replacing, you know, white guy or white woman with black woman or Latin woman. This is what they're doing. They're rewriting history. So, for example, right, let's go back to Mr. Kipling's cakes. You know the jam tarts. Imagine if they replaced the traditional jam tarts with African jam tarts. And people start saying, but we like those jam tarts. Can't we have the African jam tarts along with the traditional ones? As they say, no, can't do that. That's what Kevin Feige, Bob Iger and Disney and Marvel Studios are doing. They're replacing one cultural thing with another cultural thing. And that divides people. Let me give you another great example of actually great diversity in the entertainment industry. Any Quantum Leap fans in the house? Me. I love the original series. So they basically relaunched it, right? It was going to be a continuation of the original show. So they brought it back a couple of years ago. It's actually quite a good show. And they cast an Asian actor as a brand new character. So imagine, right, if they, you know, if they cast the same Asian actor as Sam Beckett, first of all, it wouldn't make sense because even if you're Asian American, how do you get the name Beckett, right? It wouldn't make fucking sense unless you were adopted. But, but this is good diversity. He's a brand new original character and it's fine. And it's really good diversity. And it's a solid show at the very least. It's not the icon of the original show. Of course it's not. That's how you do good diversity. You know, we've seen it in the Green Lantern Corps. They have a Latino female, an original Latino female in the, in the Green Lantern Corps. I forgot her name. Um, yeah, sue me. I can't remember her bloody name. But anyway, she's very, very popular. And she's become popular because she's not replacing anyone. She's there as well as the other characters. That's the point. So that is good diversity. But what Hollywood are doing today, and Marvel and Disney and Star Wars, they're replacing A for B. We spoke about the natural order of things in terms of films and television. There's things commercially that are appealing for the audience and there's things that there, that there are not. So you, you know, the traditional thing was leads like Clark Gable, Robert Redford, you know, Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt. They're very appealing, not just to white guys or white women, but to black people and to gay people. We spoke about this. People like those film stars and they always have. They're not, as I say, they're not just appealing to a certain section. So you can be diverse. You can add, you can, you know, you can add additionally to these stars with more diverse actors in other things. That's fine, but you can't replace Clark Gable's character, you know, in Gone with the Wind. If you do a reboot of Gone with the Wind, you can't have a black guy as Rhett Butler. It's fucking pathetic and it's stupid. These people are capable of doing that because they're insane. You can't replace one thing. Nobody's saying, don't be diverse, right? Right, look at Black Panther. Black Panther was created in comics to be diverse. Black Panther is outstanding in the comics, right? So we had a great Black Panther movie. I'm holding this. Uh, I've probably told you this if you've been following me for a long time. If I don't hold this, that disappears. And I wanted that to be my background today. So there, PS4, not PS5, up yours. I'm an antique, I like antiques. Anyway, so Black Panther cast a great guy, right? That wasn't diversity casting a black man to play Black Panther because he is black and that's great casting.
but they didn't cast him from outside the Golden Gates of Hollywood. He was cast inside. He has Hollywood DNA, right? They didn't go to Brixton. They didn't go to London to look for him. They didn't go outside the gates. He was already there. He was already there. They didn't go all over the world. They didn't go to Africa to find someone. They cast him from inside the industry. So he's not diversity in any way, shape or form. But he, he was a damn good actor. He passed away. Very, very sad. And then they fucked up the sequel and they had a, you know, a woman become Black Panther. Surprise, surprise. This is what they're doing. They're constantly pissing off the audience. So that's why I'm saying they have become the DCEU because this is what the DCEU was. It kept on doubling down on things half of the audience didn't like and created a problem. And don't forget that Snyder's movies mostly have made more money than most Phase 4 projects, right? If you look at it, yes, Spider-Man No Way Home did well, and um, the Doctor Strange, you know, in the Multiverse Madness did about 900 million. Well, BVS nearly did 900 million. Solid box office. I mean, a Batman and Superman film, absolutely, I admit it, should be doing more money. His Superman film nearly made 700 million. It's solid, not enough for the studio, but they weren't total outright flops where, you know, you look at the Marvels, absolute outright flop. It's been a disaster. This direction they're going in has been a disaster. Now, you know, as I say, they were they had a trailer for the new X-Men animated series continuing from the 90s series. And I saw the trailer and I thought, well, this looks cool. About two hours later, you had the fandom menace exposing this exposing that what they did as i said earlier like with the guy who is gender neutral or whatever the person is right i don't know i don't know if it's gender neutral or whatever i, I i'm no expert on the modern terms right but anyway it's pissed people off that's the thing it's divided people so then you've got people saying well the x-men were always about you know diversity and you know basically about racism you know, that's the whole mutant thing that society in those stories was rejecting the mutants for not being human beings. So there is an element of that, but you do have to, you know, people are just asking for consistency here. I don't, look, personally, I couldn't give a shit that there's a character that's potentially gender neutral. They were focusing on a female character who had a bigger backside in the original animated series than she does in this one, these are things I personally couldn't give a shit about. But these people are pointing them out and it's dividing audiences. So that's the problem. It looks like a really good animated show. The animation looks great and all of that. And Deadpool versus Wolverine, as I said in my trailer reaction, looks like a really exciting, entertaining movie. I would expect nothing less from Ryan Reynolds. I expect that film to do well, win big, and Fantastic Four, well, people have been wanting to see a great Fantastic Four movie since the beginning of time. So what does this all mean for James Gunn, DC Universe, and mo most importantly, Superman Legacy? What it means is James Gunn is cooking. There's not much controversy. For example, all his castings weren't controversial. You know, there's some, you know, there's Snyder fans trying to attack him, the vocal ones, not the good ones, but the vocal ones were attacking him for having Guy Gardner, for having Mr. Terrific, you know, having certain other DC characters like Hawk Girl. I say, bring it fucking on. I think, as a Superman fan, I think that's really exciting. And even Gunn said, you know, Superman has a dual identity. You know, how can he embrace his, you know, his metahuman side if he's not hanging around with his metahuman friends? That's a great fucking point, James. And I agree with that. But... Apart from this, you know, these vocal Snyder fans are like a stain you can't get out of your clothes. In the end, you just think, well, fuck it. I've got that stain. Hopefully nobody notices and let's carry on. And it's the same with these vocal Snyderverse stands attacking James. You just have to ignore them and move on. So apart from them, the casting has been plain sailing. Corrin Sweat, great casting. Brosnahan, great casting. You know, all the casting. Like... Lex Luthor, great casting, everything. You know, Guy Gardner, Nathan Fillion as Guy Gardner, bring it fucking on. 
he's already voiced the Green Lantern in animation anyway. So, and I don't care if he's James Gunn's friend. He's a damn good actor. He's a good guy. He's a talented guy. There's nothing wrong with that casting. But basically, it's been plain sailing for Snyder. Very little controversy coming his way, apart from the Snyderverse stands. Let's be clear about that. And that doesn't matter. That's irrelevant. They're always going to be there. As I say, just a stain on your trousers. Just pretend it's not there. And I'm a, I'm a Snyderverse fan as well. I love this DC Snyderverse. But I won't attack another creative because I loved something that wasn't finished because of the toxicity in a studio. It's nothing to do with James Gunn. Why blame him? You'd have to be a bit dumb. Anyway, if you want to do that, that's entirely up to you. I'm not a dictator. I can't tell you how to feel about things. But Gunn's had plain sailing. While Marvel are dividing audiences, all of a sudden, audiences slowly but surely are uniting for Superman Legacy. It's plain sailing, mostly for James Gunn. You know, he could have been controversial, but he has been, you know, he has been diverse with some of the casting so far. There's a lot of kind of Latino women, you know, he's cast already for certain roles that you wouldn't say in the comics were Latino characters. But nobody's really called him out on it, and I certainly wouldn't. Um, so it's very, very interesting here. So this could, all this kind of divisive attention that the MCU is getting, because those audiences are so divided. Since Phase 4, Marvel fandom has become more divided than D the DC fandom. That's crazy. Because the Snyder thing, the DCEU divided DC fans. That's not the fans' fault, that's the studio's fault for doing what they did. Basically, from bringing Snyder in in the first place, when they wanted to create a commercial franchise. You don't bring in Zack Snyder to give you a commercial franchise. Even his most resolute diehard die fans would at least admit to that. So, for me, it looks like we're finally going to get a DC Universe that's not divisive, that's not dividing audiences, but I think silently, Marvel fans, diehard Marvel fans, have always hated the MCU. For example, the Peter Tingle. Fucking pathetic. Things like that. Just stupid dumb shit that they were doing. Why would you call it the Peter fucking Tingle? It's so cringe. Why would you do that? It's not even funny. It's fucking spider senses. But that's what they did, because they think they're fucking fun. Anyway, so... All of a sudden, because don't forget, through phases one to three, it was DC that was divided, and Marvel was unified, and their stuff was making money, but phase four, hold my beer. So they brought their own empire down. Empires are destroyed from within. It was us over at DC wishing we had the success that Marvel did. It's not like this animated X-Men series doesn't look great. It's not like Deadpool and Wolverine doesn't look great. But there's decisions that they're making. And as I say, Pedro Pascal could end up being a great Mr. Fantastic. Now, it's interesting because when Ben Affleck was first announced as Batman, even I kind of went, oh, until so I calmed myself down and kind of said, hang on a minute, he's a really good actor, he's a great director. Maybe they're bringing him on board so he can write and direct and star in his own Batman movie, which was the plan, the something we never got, sadly and tragically. And when I saw the first trailer, I thought, fucking hell, Ben Affleck's going to be fucking great. He looks great in the costume. He looks really compelling. Yeah, that was great casting. So, you know, Pedro Pascal could end up being the same. But the thing is with Mr. Fantastic, he's as iconic as Professor X in Captain America. And Superman. You can't really mess around with those guys in terms of casting. I think they are very important. That's why, you know, Chris Evans was great casting for Captain America. That's why, you know, Sir Patrick Stewart was great casting as Professor X. And I think, you know, Mr. Fantastic literally is the Professor X of the Fantastic Four. He's their leader. He's their main guy. And I can understand, from a certain point of view, how Pedro Pascal would work. He's a little older. It can work. He's a really good actor. 
it can work. It's not doomed to fail, but obviously it has to be great. And Marvel haven't had a good record. Forget the diversity, forget the political correctness, forget the extreme left of it all. And they've gone really extreme left because it's not just the diversity. They've attacked fans. Look at She-Hulk, how it went for male fans. Their main income of their main income comes from male fans, straight male fans, and they attack them, right? You don't do that. You don't bite the hand that feeds you. So they really, really made a rod for their own back. But the DCU is something completely new. And, and you know, that's the thing. Because you had Affleck's casting, you had Eisenberg, who people never, a lot of people never accepted him as Lex. I think he gives a compelling performance as Lex Luthor in BVS. I like him as Lex Luthor. I'm in the minority, and that's the problem. When you're in the minority for casting of iconic characters and people never are going to accept them, that's a problem. But the controversy of the Fantastic Four casting goes beyond Pedro Pascal. There's the guy from Stranger Things whose name escapes me. Now, I said, you know, they keep on showing pictures of him with the long hair, but. I think when you see him with a short haircut, he looks okay. It can be done. I don't know. And, and this is what I'm saying, the difference. You know, you've proper got a comic book accurate Lois Lane and Superman in Superman Legacy. There are rumours we are going to get a Black Perry White, but it's not exactly something we haven't had before. Of course I want a comic accurate Perry White, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because he is an important character, and Perry's a very important character, even though he's more of a background character. You know, I believe in accuracy. But if you want to add diverse casts, then you do it with new original characters as well. So for me, it's kind of a culture shock at the moment to see DC cooking. DC looking very good. We've got a Joker movie this year. We've got Superman Legacy next year. We're supposed to be getting the Batman 2 next year. I still can't see that happening. I expect that movie to be delayed at least by 12 months. And people are going to be disappointed and there's going to be outrage on the internet. I won't be outraged. Let Matt Reeves cook. That's okay. But potentially we've got two DC films. I mean, there's a few Marvel projects coming out next year. I don't know what stuff's coming up on Max next year. But I know basically, unless they announce something quickly, we're only getting Superman Legacy next year. That's okay. But that movie has to cook. And I don't see any reason why that movie can't cook. Let's talk about James Gunn. Yes, James Gunn is on the left side of the political argument. He was talking a lot of politics after Guardians 1 and 2. Got himself in trouble with the right wing. They found something to expose him on and he temporarily got fired. But he came back a more humble, better person. Understanding when you talk about politics, you have to be careful. You have to be measured because you're always hurting people from the other side. If you attack them, you can actually talk politics without putting down the other side. Something that rarely happens today. And that's a shame. Let's talk about James Gunn now, the non-political side of James Gunn, the artistic side of James Gunn. This is a guy who fucking loves and knows comics. I've said it before, and this is something really good. This is a guy that cooks, that's always cooked. Whether you like Gunn or not, whether you're angry with him over Henry Cavill being recast as Superman, you can't argue that every one of his comic book projects have been at least solid, even if they're not your cup of tea, even if you don't like the overuse of his humour, they're still really good movies. And I know that certain, again, I have to mention you, vocal Snyderverse stands like post clips online, like kind of out of context to make his films look bad. But anyone who's seen Peacemaker, who's seen The Suicide Squad, who's seen his Guardians trilogy, at the very least, even if those things are not your cup of tea, Understand this is a man with a vision, who makes good entertainment, who understands these properties. So he's quite a good guy to have, you know, running the creative arm of DC, in my personal opinion. Now, 
Fake isn't really... Fake's been involved with comic book movies since Fox's X-Men. And I think he would even had a little role behind the scenes, uh, you know, on Raimi's Spider-Man as well. Definitely on the X-Men movies. He's been around for a while. I'm not sure how much of a comic book dude he is. He's more of a studio guy. He's more of a, you know, but he did a really good job for the longest of times. As I said yesterday, I felt that, and I think I misspoke and spoke too soon, that he's wrestled control back from Disney of Marvel Studios, but it's looking like that's not really the case. I don't think this is his fault. I think that Disney and Iger and, you know, and Shapek before, you know, put Kevin, and he's, you know, Kevin Feige's kind of in this in no win situation where he has to do as they say because marvel studios at the end of the day is you know owned by disney so he's not a free agent but i think in the early days in the phases from one to three days at the very least they gave him free reign because he was making money but then it became ultimately political which hurt the mcu badly and until they stop doing this, they are going to divide audiences. And it's the same with what happened with the Snyderverse. Snyder kept on doubling down on what he was doing because he didn't care about the box office. He didn't care about people who didn't like him. He enjoyed triggering those people. So he kept on doubling down. And the more you double down, the more pain you're going to get. It's like when people do videos calling out their trolls, it just creates more trolls. That, and you, the more you double down on something, um, the worse it's going to get. So Disney continued doubling down on the representation. It's true that Fantastic Four predominantly has comic book accurate castings, apart from Pedro Pascal, but he's playing the main character. As I said earlier, Mr. Fantastic is up there with Sigman, Captain America, and Professor X. He's the leader of that group. He's the most important character in that group there is no question about it it's always been there's also been rumors that you know vanessa kirby's character and you know she's playing sue storm um is going to be the main character of that movie universe as well which is going to piss people off to no end because they're a team they should be equally on the same footing but it's always kind of been, and again, I don't know the comics, but in my eyes, it's always been like Mr. Fantastic is kind of the person they look to. Again, I could be wrong about that. So you're really going to piss people off. You know, there's rumors that they're going to, that Doctor Doom may be, you know, a female. I don't know. There's lots of rumors coming out about shit, but I don't know. All I know is they keep on doing this. They keep on doubling down on their narrative and they're hurting themselves just like the DCEU did. Because once you know your consumer, half your consumer doesn't like something, you must stop doing it. But for Disney, it's not just the diversity and the dive into the extreme left. It's the fact that their content is no longer entertaining because they're hiring activists to make their entertainment. People who have no idea how to entertain the audience. Well, nobody knows how to entertain the audience more than James Gunn, because he did it in Guardians Volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 3, The Suicide Squad, even though it was a flop and released during the pandemic, and Peacemaker. And at the very least, he has comic book knowledge and he knows how to make great entertainment. And if we look at WB, they are beginning to win and win big. They won with Barbie last year. They won with Wonka last year. The reviews and reactions to June 2 are so ultra positive, calling it one of the best sci-fi movies of all time. That's at least going to make another 700 million for them, maybe even more. So all of a sudden, Zaslav and WB are cooking. And at the end of the day, all the controversy over Zaslav and the tax write-offs like the Looney Tunes movie produced by James Gunn, that just goes away. That just goes away. That's just part of the cons. You know, they're trying to rebuild the brand of Warner Brothers and hard, difficult decisions are being made. But he is starting to win. They are starting to make money. And if Superman Legacy is another win for Zaslav, Gunn and Saffron, 
then, you know, they're building it back up while Disney continues to fail. It would be great if Marvel and DC could both succeed at the same time, but it looks like that's not going to be a reality.